Hello and welcome back. In this lecture, we'll build ASP.NET web application uh, with a backend of SQL database. So if you are trying to build uh, or if you are trying to follow the same thing along with me, you can download from the resource section of this lecture and uh, that would be in a zip format post to the unzip that is when you unzip you would be getting like this and as a pre-requirement uh, within this you need to actually open with uh, visual studio so you need to have at least a visual studio community edition or visual studio so that this solution can be deployed directly from the visual studio and also uh, i'm just opening this visual studio in the meantime i'm going to use the in the back end everything as the previous lecture uh, based uh, app services as well as the application that we created as a demo so let's jump into that so as you see here um, if you're quite new to the visual studio uh, basically this entire uh, course is designed for it admins means uh, solution architects or azure administrators not for the devops guys so uh, definitely if you are uh, from the devops background this would be very light and very easiest uh, thing that i'm trying to do it here but if you are coming from a background of it admin uh, like a solution architect and then it would be a bit of uh, confusing a bit of a uh, little bit of higher than the uh, solution architect side but yes uh, you should know it how to actually deploy this application maybe you don't need to know how to code it but you need to know how to uh, we can deploy the azure resources with the help of different tools like we talked about um, you can directly deploy from a sky drive there's one drive and dropbox and also from the github and uh, as your repositories and also from the visual studio so now we are trying everything from the visual studio within this demo so let's uh, have a look on it so once we have imported with the solution file when you try to open solution file this is how it looks like and all you have to do is just go ahead and try to uh, do the debug so what happens is uh, i mean this is a code inside uh, just wanted to you know show you that uh, everything is uh, inbuilt now here of course we no need to uh, learn about all this coding but just to you know tell you that there is an application that was designed and developed by your developers and now how do we deploy so that's what we are trying to do so for that what we do is actually once we have the uh, working code we can actually go and press ctrl f5 that would actually start uh, without debugging so when you click on that uh, it actually opens in a browser uh, with the default browser and th that's how the solution uh, opens so my solution i'm trying to create here all the tables or to-do list you see here i'm able to uh, create the uh, to-do list as well as i can even delete that uh, i mean i'm just trying to uh, do all the functions that are able to work or not like we just deleted it's working so that's good so the solution uh, code wise everything looks good and if you see here this is my web.config file which talks about my sql database connection with my db con connection and this is where it is trying to connect with the sql as a local string but these values will change as we go and deploy from a publishing wizard because our solution we wanted to deploy an azure cloud not on our local machine so uh, there we need to have our SQL database as a connection also so we are going to do that in a minute but just wanted to show you where we have the SQL connection so this is where the string you have under web.config as well as you also have under models my database context.cs um, that's where also you have one more uh, file which talks about the connection with a public class so you see here uh, that's where actually you have the my database connection information so these are the two things in case if you created your database with a different name you might have to change there and uh, that's how you can actually integrate the backend connectivity within your program or within your solution so in our case we are going to use the default thing so i'm just right clicking and um, say that you know publish so what would happen is when i try to uh, publish so it it will ask me hey you are going to publish this solution where do you want to publish so are you want to publish it to microsoft azure cloud or maybe docker repository or to a folder or ftp or ias or maybe you just wanted to import some kind of you know, profile information so in our case definitely it could be or it is in fact the azure cloud so i would take as azure and then click on next 
then this time it's going to ask me hey you wanted to deploy the solution to azure cloud that's good but is this solution is uh, what kind of solution you're gonna do so let me click on azure and click on next so that would actually takes me to another window where it's gonna ask me hey you are gonna uh, deploy this solution for azure app services or container registry that's nothing but a acr or maybe a, to a virtual machine so in our case this solution is for uh, azure web apps or app services model so i'll just uh, click on app service and click on next then it's going to ask me hey you said you know you're going to deploy to azure cloud do you have a user account that is already signed in if it is not signed in it's going to ask you to sign up so in my case that's not my account which i have my azure cloud has a subscription so i clicked on add account that actually opens a new window where i need to enter my uh, credentials to log into azure portal and that credentials will uh, redirect back here so i just log in and now it actually pulls my subscription my resource groups and within that resource group whatever the application that we created in the previous demo that we are able to see if you remember in the previous lecture we created a paddy dot um, windows app and that app we can actually use it here so i'm going to actually choose the same app but the resource type is resource group that i wanted to deploy inside that so i'll just select that and uh, once i select that uh, i get the finish button here and when i click on that this solution is ready to deploy but you see here this is a publish option so once i have done everything i can actually click on publish but are we really ready not really because the sql connection we have not yet configured like uh, here you can actually configure the sql configuration and also if you are looking for application insights you can configure from here so we didn't do that actually so what we'll do is we will actually connect uh, if you see here this is actually a connected so this is nothing but in other ways uh, in, in the devops uh, point of view it's a uh, ci and cd uh, like continuous integration and continuous deployment so whatever the changes you do within this code and uh, within this code or within this file or within the solution and when you try to publish actually it gets published automatically uh, without actually you log into azure portal so you have a continuous integration continuous development of your solution that's really a good thing that we have with the devops and uh, now uh, once uh, i if i try to open up this url also it's gonna work because uh, <coughs> because this url is the same url that we try to deploy and also we map this application earlier with the custom domain so end of this solution uh, if we try to browse with the custom domain i should be able to browse the application now as a next step uh, i'll actually select here uh, hey you want to deploy uh, the sql server in azure cloud or you want to use as a local sql server so if you have a front end as azure uh, and database is in your on premises and both have a connectivity then yes you can choose the second option but in our case every everything is in the azure cloud so i would actually go and select azure database and click on next and uh, if if i have already sql database is created it's gonna list it here my sql database and the pool and the database name sql server name all that will be uh, listed here but in our case we don't have actually that's why right. so as a next step i have to click on create new create a sql database so as you know if you have not gone through the sql database lectures so what happens is uh, as a first step it has to create a sql server and on top of the sql server you will actually um, create the database so as a first step you're going to actually create the sql server and then you're going to create databases so that's a two step uh, within the microsoft azure cloud so we are actually creating here the sql server so uh, i can actually give here if you see here there's no database so the first thing is the uh, i need to create the sql server so that's what i'm doing here if you read here database server name so this is going to be a unique name uh, that must be so i'll just you know give here a unique name like a paddy or paddy paddy better so if i try with a paddy it doesn't allow because somebody has might be taken already by this time so if i use my brand name kind of thing you know paddy it might work so in our case actually we are giving web app uh, 
on SQL and then make sure that the right regions has been taken because your solution should go into the right uh, regions uh, along with the right resource so that you follow the entire life cycle of your uh, resources in a single life cycle and uh, I'm going to give here the admin account so let's say you can give as uh, MySQL admin or SQL admin and give a password here so I'll just enter here SQL admin and the password and click OK so that's gonna actually create a password and also this is going to be the database name uh, if you want you can change that so in my case I'm okay with that because it's a test for the demonstration and click on create that's gonna actually create the database so in the back end it is actually takes some time to create in the back end a SQL server should be provisioned within the Microsoft Azure cloud and then the database should be provisioned you see here the database is provisioned SQL server is provisioned and the server admin to log into those databases we use SQL admin and you see here the databases so one database called creator which is an online state and that's a database server name <laughs> and this is where you can if you are trying to connect you can use the connection string to uh, connect it so this has actually taken some time for me uh, maybe five ten minutes time so in the back end it has created all these and now uh, if you look at here i'm just selecting the database there i wanted my uh, solution should be connected as a back end so this is where it's going to ask me to enter the connection string details so uh, for me the connection string is uh, nothing but if I just you know show you here it will automatically build all these values like a password user ID all that dynamically so what I'm gonna do is instead of pasting the connection string values here I would actually uh, prefer to fill all these values so that it would automatically fill this value in the connection string so my connection SQL Server connection string name is my DB connection why I should give the same name is in my solution if I just go to my zip solution and go to models and uh, there's a file called my database context.cs if I just open that I'm actually opening in a notepad the reason being I have already opened here with the Visual Studio so I can't cancel that visit that's why I'm opening in a notepad otherwise I like to open with the Visual Studio and uh, you see here uh, the name of my database name is my DB connection in case if you have given a different name you must have to reap also the similar name otherwise it doesn't work your solution if you try to do it so in case if you get an error um, post to this deployment just make sure that these connection is must be the same so this name must be the same uh, for the solution because we have hard-coded this name in case you change a different name it's not gonna work uh, you have to change into that models and uh, my database context dot CS file that's okay and uh, now let's go to my uh, login ID uh, so here if you if I just go to my server that's my server the SQL server and you see here that's a server admin my SQL admin so I'll just give that name and the password is a password which I normally use the password so you see here now this connection string is completely created with a strong password and all that has been built automatically now here you can click on Azure app settings uh, or you want to you know save these things into a uh, key vault services you can do that also so we did actually worked on key vault lot within this course also you can check out those lectures but uh, these secrets gets actually stored into the key vault services in case if you are using that and uh, in my case I'm just uh, storing uh, within this uh, application and I can show you that post to the application connection string so if I click on uh, next uh, it is actually uh, dependency whatever the uh, project specific code is there that nuggets will be actually downloads in the back end and uh, if you see here uh, it's actually failed it's gonna fail for me uh, the reason being uh, you see here this was actually failed for me the reason being the dotnet version was not compatible mode of my core application which was created here this specific web application so I have done a few changes I'm gonna show you that in a minute and that's nothing but the dotnet version was changed uh, nothing else actually and uh, post to that I have rerun that wizard uh, and then it got successful so let's see uh, by closing this now we have configured properly everything like the database and the solution and the design also looks good for us then 
as a final step we have to publish so when we do a publish it's going to overwrite the code on this specific website which was created as a web application for us so that's what we are trying to do now by clicking on a publish button that might take a minute or so to automatic uh, publishing publishing uh, should happen so let's click on uh, publish that takes a minute or so to publish and it also opens automatically web uh, in a web page and that page again looks very similar to our local host uh, the board what we open very similar but uh, it actually was the works the application so what we can do is now this is the application is already open and it's working fine and as you see here I can work with this application like creating uh, this is actually coming from uh, Azure cloud right so you see here this website is actually loading from the Azure cloud and it looks good and I can add whatever the demo to or demo or Google whatever it is so I can just add my task and my schedules all that so this simple web application is working fine and we were able to publish this ASP dot web application with the help of Azure SQL database in the back end and all the functionalities is working like deleting creating of my solution so let's see think that this is was this was downloaded by your DevOps guys or your developers and it is working fine and as you remember we actually map this uh, application with mssccnguru.com and I'm able to even browse with that public domain name also so that's really good and uh, and it's working as I expected so let's jump into the Azure portal to see what are the things that we have done and all that okay so let's see here um, this is the web application that we are talking about and uh, within this uh, we have a configuration the first thing uh, within the configuration you see here this is where the database connection string uh, which was uh, defined so let me actually unzoom or uh, to show you properly uh, here in fact we also talked in the uh, in the previous lecture about this connection string information uh, where under configuration you have these options more about the uh, SQL database connection uh, settings can be applied under application settings right that's what we talked and this is where I have changed uh, to 4.8 earlier it was actually older version that is 3.5 was there so I changed 3.5 to 4.8 and also a uh, platform from 64 bit uh, I did also changed now let's jump into the scaling how best we can do the scaling so when you just go and do the scale out uh, by default you have the scaling options so like the default profile also available within this default profile which was created automatically created scaling condition so all you have to do is you have to add a rule uh, for a condition let's say this web application is getting overloaded uh, with a CPU percentage of 75 then uh, I need to uh, scale up so for that uh, what I'm gonna do is I can in fact here by if I just you know edit I can give here a rename this description to something else if I really want it and um, if I want to you know add a rule just click on add rule and I can look at the application this is app resource resource type and average of a CPU percentage uh, for my uh, CPU percentage if it is actually reaching uh, close to if I just go down a little bit uh, it actually tells about metrics of threshold of 75 or 70 percentage higher uh, if it's greater than that and if it stays there about 10 minutes continuously then I'm gonna uh, spin up one instance uh, uh, one more instance this is called auto scaling option with cooling of five minutes let's say after 70 percentage of utilization of CPU if it is already 10 minutes then it's gonna spin up one machine right but if the CPU percentage goes down then it will wait for five minutes to validate whether that CPU is really cooling down if so it will cool down by one instance count that's what we have here option and we did actually talked a lot about the uh, scaling options on a virtual machines you can check out that lecture and uh, we did talk in detail about the scaling modes uh, that are three or four different methods that you have uh, and also the auto method that we have just looked into it 
in case if you're missing you can uh, check out here also in fact I'm gonna cover that so I'm creating one more profile this time I'm going to see that based in the time zone I wanted on a specific date uh, this scaling should happen let's see if it is a black Friday uh, then the scaling should you know go for minimum maximum of uh, instances or maybe one more uh, profile I can create here and I can see that hey I want my instances should happen on a specific days so let's say Friday and Saturday and Sunday example on a specific time zone on a specific time I can configure so you have all these options you can simply save that so oops I think I taken a wrong date so you see here start and end date is wrong so let me take a future date uh, for auto scale on that specific days click on save that would actually save the auto scale options uh, for my web application so this is how it's going to work uh, for the web application deployment with um, Visual Studio or ASP.NET application with the backend of SQL database and you can do the scaling and you can use your custom domain for your web application. So I hope this entire lecture is useful for you. Thank you for watching this.